Hey everyone, Keith Rogers here with DesktopLays.com. I'm making this uh, quick video to demonstrate how to true up the soft jaws on the 1050 uh, three jaw chuck. Um, the soft jaws are uh, basically small aluminum pieces um, that have not been machined. Um, there's a flat side and uh, a narrower side and uh, once they're installed in the three jaw with uh, two fasteners each they clamp down on the material but before you've trued them up they're not going to um, put the material dead center with the spindle so one of them might be a little bit uh, further back than the others etc so um, this is going to illustrate why we need to true those up and how to go about doing it okay this will demonstrate why the soft jaws need trued up so I've got uh, the chuck installed on on the lathe and um, I've got a dial indicator uh, just mounted with regular tool post here um, so that it's measuring the run out on this uh, reamer that I've chucked uh, into the jaws so right now without any machining we're looking at uh, the needle moving to about five and a half thousandths and next we'll go ahead and do the machining operation and then check this again okay I've set everything up to perform the machining operation um, for many of you this might be your first uh, your first machining task on the lathe so I'm going to go into some detail here on how I've set this up I've installed a washer uh, this washer has been clamped down so that the backlash in the jaws is taken up and it'll be uh, the same, it'll put the jaws in the same position as they would be uh, if a piece of material was clamped in here. So this is the position that we want to machine the jaws at. The um, uh, depth stop needs to be set so that when we uh, move the boring bar tool uh, to perform a pass uh, we get a consistent depth and we want to set it so that it stops right at about the washer there so I'm going to do that now so it's just barely touching the washer I'll lock the carriage in with the thumb screw in the back use this steel rod push it up against the carriage and then lock it in place with the thumb screw so now we've got it set so that we'll unlock it here so that the carriage uh, will travel to a consistent depth repeatedly and next um, maybe I forget to mention we've got the boring bar tool installed here um, pretty much perpendicular to the chuck um, we need to find where it just begins touching uh, at least one of the soft jaws so what I'll do is bring it out with uh, with your cross slide dial just to the point where I'm making contact and you might make more contact with one of the jaws than the others in other words um, one of them is going to be the closest so you want to find that one Okay, we're just touching one of the jaws, so go ahead and lock uh, the cross slide, and we're pretty much set up to go. We want to make sure we have full clearance so that as this thing's spinning, we're not going to hit the cross slide or the carriage with the jaws um, or the tool post. Uh, we've got good clearance on the boring bar. Okay, I've got the belt set on the lowest speed and uh, I'm going to use the power feed on about uh, medium speed. That's not too critical. The cross side's been locked with the gib here and I'll hold the power feed and we'll do the first pass. And you can hear the intermittent contact because we're only contacting, oh, and there we got two. Uh, probably one or two jaws. 
and you might see some aluminum pieces uh, at this point, but we're just barely touching some of the jaws, maybe now all three, so you can hear the sound change. And once we get to the full depth, we'll likely uh, just brush that washer and hear a different sound. Okay, so we bottomed out on the depth stop, and uh, it's important uh, in a machining operation generally to uh, look at the cross slide. Right now, the cross slide's set at. I'm gonna go handheld here, so this might get messy. Um, about the number five. So what I'm gonna first do is note that position. Unlock the cross slide. Turn the dial so that we're maybe five thousandths away from the material. Turn back out. Go back to my number five mark. And now I'm going to take it out an additional, let's say, three thousandths. So, brought it out to uh, the five, four, three, two, the number two, and lock the cross light again, and then we'll go for another pass. And we bottomed out again. So repeat the same procedure, unlock the cross slide. I will move away from the material, noting my original indicator position. Come back to the number two, and I'm gonna go for five thousandths this time, so that will take me to 47. So there's 50 thousandths for a full rotation, so we're going backwards in this boring operation. Okay, relock the cross slide and making another pass. Okay, we bottomed out again. Um, I'm noting that I'm on the number 47. So I'll unlock the cross slide, move away from the material. Move the carriage back, go back to 47, and I'll go another five thousandths, which puts me at 42. Relock the cross slide, and here we go again for the fourth pass. Okay, the sound uh, tells me we're making contact, consistent contact with all of the jaws. Probably uh, some were taking a little more material from than others. So after this pass, I'm going to um, stop and take a look and see how much material we've removed. Okay, I've stopped the lathe and looking at the machining, the machine surface on each of the jaws. And as I expected, um, this one's a little narrower. Uh, this one might be even narrower. This one's fairly wide. So we've um, we've removed material from all three. So at this point, we could stop, and um, and we'd be good. I think I'm going to take uh, I'm going to go ahead and take another ten thousandths off uh, off camera. And after that, we'll measure the run out again with the reamer and see how much we've improved. Okay, we're measuring run out again. I've got the uh, reamer reinstalled and uh, dial indicator measuring for the run out. Um, one of the main differences between this setup and the previous uh, run out measurement is that the reamer cannot be uh, recessed all the way so that the jaws are gripping the entire um, surface. Uh, that they, you know, the full depth of the uh, soft jaws. So 
Um, what remains to be done is to file off the small lip that was left from the washer. And um, so right now, as it, as it is, we've got about two thousandths of uh, needle movement. So we were at about, I believe, five and a half before, and now we're down to two. So that's good, but we're not uh, we're not quite there yet. Next, we'll remove the soft jaws and file down uh, each of the lips, and then insert the reamer um, so that it fully recesses and measure again. You want these jaws to be put back in the same location on the chuck uh, that you machine them in. I would do one at a time, reinstall, or uh, mark them with a marker, either way. Okay, I've removed one of the jaws and we can look at the machine surface here and we can see this lip that remains. So what I'll do is clamp this in a vise and then just use a file to uh, remove that material. Okay, the filing has been completed and you can see the lip is now gone. Take off more material than the machining operation left so that uh, this is recessed below the contact surface. Uh, we just don't want there to be more material back here than along here. Okay, we're measuring runout again after removing the lip. Uh, I also had to go ahead and bore out another 20 thousandths or so uh, worth of material uh, to uh, remove that two thou of runout we were seeing before. So, uh, as you can see, the needle moves probably about a half a thousandths as we rotate this reamer which uh, is what we're after. The last thing I want to demonstrate in this video is um, the stepping of the jaws. Uh, so the same technique um, can be used to bore the jaws out in steps. This part, for example, could not be machined unless you were to put steps in these jaws. And so this is an example of a jaw that's been uh, stepped to accept a larger piece of material and you would use the exact same technique for truing to go ahead and uh, bore steps. You can also flip them and again keep them on the same location and perform the same truing operation on the other side and what you'll end up with is one side that can grip smaller material and one that has the steps for a variety of diameters. So that's it. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, uh, just shoot me uh, uh, an email on the contact form on the website or uh, go ahead and place a comment on if you're watching this on YouTube and I will uh, try to answer them as best I can. Thanks.